So welcome everyone. This is the Elemental Heart Wisdom Podcast with me, Mara, and I'm here today with Björn Andreas Bulhansen. Björn is a Norwegian novelist or best-selling novelist, I believe. He's also a bushcrafter, a nature advocate, um, a, a YouTuber with three different channels, actually, and speaks on a range of different topics from um, Viking uh, lifestyle and also supporting young men in, in masculinity and life coaching and lots, a, a whole array of topics and has a massive following. So I really recommend checking uh, Bjorn out on YouTube. F amazing videos. I just absolutely love them. And with such integrity and humility and humor and all that you bring into uh, what you share, Bjorn, um, I'm very honored to have you here today. Thank you. Well, that was uh, lots of kind words there. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted to have you. As I was telling you before we got on the call, I came across you recently. I was doing I'm, I'm doing a lot of different uh, consciousness work on ancestral healing and also resolving trauma between the masculine and the feminine. Um, and a lot what was coming in through the land that I live upon was uh, the layers of of viking and uh irish interactions you know mm. uh, through the time and obviously we have a massive viking base here um in the east of ireland and a, and a couple over on the west where i live as well so i think there's definitely um a merging of culture with the irish and, and the viking for sure oh, yeah. um so i know that you have researched and you live upon the land of of these ancestral roots. And I'd love you to speak a little bit to the land that you live upon and how this connection has emerged for you with uh, really diving deep into your Viking roots. Yeah, well, actually, I do. I, I live with I, I can go and walk my dogs and I often do literally among the grave mounds and stone circles uh, of my ancestors um, pre-Viking Age um, sites that had significance for the people back then um, and obviously for someone who knows the, the history of uh, well the Bron Bronze Age history and Viking history and so on uh, it's right in the middle of everything right here uh, i live in the southeastern part of norway um and uh, the fjord here is called viking and one of the theories concerning the word viking which is not a verb like many americans think um is that those were the people who came from this area from viking um this fjord uh, or any fjord that's not the theory but um um it's uh yeah it's right here and uh i i i do feel a connection uh all of the time uh when i'm outside out in the forest out at sea and uh, it's a very strong connection mm -hmm. it's not like everyone who lives here has that connection um, right. Sadly, I would say, but mm. it's certainly uh, very, it's not difficult to, if you're talking about connecting to the land, it's not difficult. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect area for that, I, I would say. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. So that, that for you then, that connection with the stone circles and the sacred places have they have they evoked in you a, a a deep memory of any particular ancestors or is it just a general feeling of of that of the culture that you remember no i i i'm not um no it's it's not like that it's it's just a general feeling and uh right. and knowledge the knowledge that i have about what happened at certain places and sites, historical sites, uh, it's a very that gives me a very strong connection because I know what happened here and why. And well, we don't know everything, but um, of course, but yes, it's um, I'm not so. Uh, 
concerned about uh, any uh, what some people would call uh, like almost like a magical connection with uh, with something. And I'm not so concerned about that. I'm a very right. simple man. Right. I don't care so much about those things. I just like to be out in the woods and out at sea. There's a connection there. I come my mm. uh, my ancestors came from this place. Not all of them, but most of them. Right. Uh, I know this because I've had someone in my close uh, in one of my relatives had has done research on the ancestral lineage lines uh, going back there. We came from Ireland, actually, ah. many hundreds of years ago. Really, yeah. wow! Uh, like in, before the Viking Age, uh, but of course, that far back, it's um, it's there are many uncertainties, as you know. Um, of course, but um, she traced it back to one, year one hundred or something like that. Wow! <laughs> On which so side of your family? On your father or your mother's side? Oh, this was on my father's side. side okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then and then going back, are you multiple generations Norwegian uh, then on yeah. both sides? Since uh, the 1500s. Um, and then some, well, there, there are many, of course, but some yes. were from the 1500s coming from Denmark. They came from the British Islands. And then there's many other lines. They're all like Norwegians, like going back past the Viking Age uh, right. as uh, people living in this area. Um, but we're all like a mix, mixture of uh, different uh, genes, right? Of course we are. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that we, we can pull from all of those different genes, right, in terms of how we meet the landscape and how we meet um, life, yeah. I suppose, in these times. So in, as in that respect, then, when you speak to your connection with nature, it's it's really an instinctive connection with being out in nature and what that brings to you. Could you tell me what that brings to you, how, how you how you engage with nature? Yeah, well, it's just, uh, it's very simple. It's not complicated. I just feel like this is right. This is how it should be. And yeah. what goes away uh, concerning stress and so on, it should go away because maybe it's not so important. You know, you yeah. you see that, you understand that when you're out in, in nature for some time. Um, and again you know doesn't need to be so complicated um that's that's it what matters well what matters yeah. is to have some food and some shelter for the night and that makes me happy that's mm. i don't need much more than that you know so <laughs> well isn't that the true wealth really this yeah that yeah, yeah. so i mean i suppose that when people have become so um, disconnected and removed from nature mm -hmm. that even the simplest connection with nature now seems like it's it's almost uh, um, unachievable for some, uh, you know, in the, in in this time. Um, yes, and you know what? I get come well. I'm on YouTube as you mentioned. I have four yes. channels actually, but oh, okay. Um, yeah <laughs> wow prolific Bjorn. <laughs> um but uh no the the fourth is just a training vlog uh so it's not it's not for well people can watch it if they have such interests but um right. but yeah um what i get more often than i like is comments uh saying things like they they don't believe that i'm really out in nature some people claim that i'm using a green screen <laughs> yes actually and i i first time i saw that i thought that was a joke that's that, that's a bit funny now i've seen it several times and wow claims like i just parked my car over here and i walk over to the other side and it's all fake um and and I, I I try not to get angry. I, I no, I don't get angry, but it's yeah. because I, I understand that these people they 
probably they live in a very urban area. Yeah. Uh, maybe they th- maybe they've never been out in the woods, you know. Um, there's a bit of enemy going in, in into the, the, that whole thing, but but it is a bit scary that there are, and I don't read all the comments, and still I have seen those comments more often than I like. And why do people put in that in doubt that I'm actually out there? I mean, I'm not I, claiming that I'm I'm in the far far wilderness somewhere. No, no, no. I am actually, but um, it's like it's but they, they there is the there there is no conception of it you know it's the same here in ireland like i live in the countryside here i i interact with nature daily and and post pictures around that in order for people to be able to bridge and receive those energies because they can't you know a lot of people can't access that and and similar to that i i you know i do think that there is envy um there's like well isn't it well for you that you can be in nature and and do those things but it's a choice right it's a choice in how you live your life and yeah i mean that is that is very upsetting that pe- people have become that removed that they they can't even tell reality from um, from a projected reality, you know. So, yeah, mm. I wouldn't pay much attention to to them, Bjorn. To be honest, no, no, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, sad, you know? it is. It is. It is. I. But I think that's where we're at. I think that the world has, as you know, divided. Um, and split uh, in in the last few years in particular, where many have made different choice points um, in how they're going to navigate their lives. And I think the coming back to nature and what is simple and what 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 you need to actually um, thrive and survive in these times is really important. So I love that you share that. And that is that is the gold for these times, you know, how how to build a fire and, you know, watching you build a fire and create, you know, a simple cup of coffee and food and being out in that way. Um, gosh, I mean, if we lose that, where are we going to be? Well, I yeah, and I, I've been in England and you know what, I'll admit it straight away. I've never been to Ireland. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I, Eng- England have... is no, is no, I uh, bless the English folk, but England is not a patch on Ireland. No, I, it's like, it's very embarrassing. I need to get myself to Ireland very soon because also yeah. it's important concerning my, my writing as a novelist and so on. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, but I've been to England a few times and uh, what upsets me is that there are people, I love, the, I love England. I, I will say I love England. Yeah. I, that's why I'm being there, you know. But it's pe- the, the people everywhere, and also rules about everything everywhere. And you can't go camping, hiking where you want. Yeah. Uh, that last bit there is uh, is strange to me because as a Norwegian, we are brought up with. Well, you can go hiking and camping where you want. Of course, uh, it's in the law here. Uh, of course, not not on someone's lawn, like <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> you know what I mean. So yeah, um, yeah. Hmm. It, it's very boxed off and regulated over there. I just came back from a trip, uh, driving over, and yeah, it's a very very different reality to Ireland actually in in terms of landscape. Um, it you yeah. know it's it, there's a lot of wild camping here. There's a lot of freedom to roam here, which is uh, which is amazing, and it's actually written into the Irish ancient Irish laws that you know you, you, farmers will open their land to you to to oh, cross great. through yeah. and and that kind of thing so yeah it's a very different feel so the wildness is, is still very intact here which i love about yeah Ireland. yeah that's wonderful i mentioned this because i do see that governments around in different countries are pushing for more restrictions concerning your freedom of movement which is yeah. troubling and uh, a bit scary um so yes. that must not happen, you know. Yeah, yeah. I I hear you deeply. I I didn't find you when when in the in the COVID narrative times in in those times, but I I really resonate with all that you've shared and and take a, a similar stance as well. 
Um, it was it was crazy in Ireland. It was a very tough place to exist during those yes, years. Yes, I, I, I heard about that, yes. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very tough. And I'd say I had two years of being totally hermited by myself. And it was, uh, yeah, we we were, those who made a diff- different decision uh, were shunned out of society, which has yep. been heart- heartbreaking, actually. You know, yeah, I'm I'm so sorry to I I, I know about that and I'm yeah. so sorry to hear it. Yeah. To hear about that. Uh, I can tell you that in Norway it wasn't really that bad. Right. Uh, Sweden was okay, you know. Uh, Norway was a little bit more a little bit crazy, but not I didn't notice much of anything, any of that uh, actually. Right. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, well they did push for the Yes. The whole injection thing all of the time and all that, but you could go about your normal life. Um, at least, well, I did. So at one point there, I just stopped listening to what they were saying. Yeah. Yeah. You have <laughs> to. You had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm. uh, you, uh, you couldn't, you know, yeah, luckily I live in, in the countryside. So I, you know, freedom was not restricted on, on that level, but still it was, uh, it was, tri- it was a tricky and horrific time, I have to say. Um, and there'll always be another big thing. So it's, it's oh. how, do, how do we, or how do you, should I say, stay balanced and um root it in these times so that you're not going into polarized energies well, i don't know if i am honestly <laughs> okay okay well I you guess. seem like you are well uh yeah well that's on that's in the in the videos i guess i, I do get upset of course um, and like now we have this these corruption scandals in norway and i'm like i'm sitting in the sofa here saying I told you all that Norway is a corrupt country and you wouldn't listen. And now, <laughs> so, yeah. so these, uh, the former prime minister, you know, and they're calling it something different, but it's corruption, you know, and, and, uh, and all that. So that's, yeah, yeah it makes me upset and angry and, yeah. Um, but I, I do find again that uh, as soon as I go out into nature, uh, that it goes away. Yeah, it doesn't matter so much anymore. Absolutely, know. absolutely. Well, I, it's it's a different consciousness. I believe that I don't know if this is your belief system at all, but I'm very connected with nature in terms of how we interact or coexist with one another and the, and the energy around that and how, you know, when we are, when we are present with nature and, and when we interact with, with humility and reverence that, that nature holds us in a way and really helps restore us. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And it's like, uh, that view of nature is very good that you're and it's I couldn't have said it any better uh, I feel that nature is never against me um, and I'm I've actually been buried in an avalanche I almost died oh it's, wow it's, but I still believe that nature is never against me it's on my team <laughs> we're on the same yes. team you know yes um, and um, and I disagree with the people who you know that attitude you see on the tv these so-called survival shows oh it's man against nature and so on well that's what got us into this trouble absolutely that attitude, you know absolutely i don't like that at all so yeah yeah no uh nature yes as you said will, will hold us and yeah if you know about nature if you know nature like uh, know the plants the trees how to navigate, how the weather patterns move, you will be quite comfortable out in nature. And uh, you will know how to um, have a pleasant time out there, even if the weather is bad uh, and yeah. all that. So Yes, mm. so, tr- so true. And how to, sp- how to spot danger as well, and also navigate it if, if you need to, which is... Yeah. Yeah. Which is a yeah a great skill to have. So for you, Bjorn, 
I know that you you speak a lot around um really the the masculine voice that's really needed I feel particularly in these times of you know integrity and what it means to be a man um and you know the the other narratives the counter narratives that are happening through um through social media now which are just toxic um and, and that young men and women are following on on both sides you know um what could you speak to the importance really of role models and of of you know grounded role models uh moving through yeah. these times in that respect yeah uh first i will say just a few words about weakness um and uh, then about talk i will talk a little bit about role models because um, we have basically two ideas that are very dominant now about how men should be what masculinity is you have let's just call them the woke crowd people will know what i mean when i say the woke people you know what toxic masculinity and you shouldn't be masculine and and, and all that and i you know do you know what i mean by that? yeah yes absolutely yeah i do so, yeah Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then you have, uh, and that it comes from a place of weakness, right? Uh, and then you have also um, the what's his name, uh, the An Andrew Tate, is it? Andrew Tate. Ah, uh, yes, I'd only heard of him recently, actually, through you. Recording stopped. Sorry, we're back. We dropped off there. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll just continue. Do. And then I'm pretty sure his name is Andrew Tate. Uh, and most people will know who that person is. He's um, in his, uh, with a shirt off, uh, smoking a cigar, women should be used and, um, and all of that thing. Yeah. That also comes from a place of weakness. Um, it's not it's not masculinity it's not being a man they are acting like immature boys and i have no respect for that at all it's just silly and stupid and a little bit evil but i think both of those fractions of those groups there they we wouldn't have had people believing in any of those ideas if we had good role models it goes for both girls and boys but i'll talk about the boys now yeah. um we in this part of the world uh, a lot of especially those who are younger than than me they grew up without the present father so they were they maybe they did not have a, a, a masculine positive masculine role model mm -hmm. uh, so they grow up believing either that being proper masculine is bad and toxic or they think that you need to be one of these idiots uh with a shirt off smoking a cigar talking about women like they're all excuse my language prostitutes yeah um because that's their role model uh, mm -hmm. that they found on the internet uh, we need positive role models and i, I don't know yeah. how to provide that to boys today but you know uh if you do some sports maybe that your coach could be a role model there if it's yes. uh, uh and or yeah you know, I'm, I'm the boy scouts maybe i was in the boy scouts <laughs> um and it's like they we need more men to take that um uh, to do things where they meet boys so that they can be those good positive role models yes yeah yeah well and and also it's it's you embodying it in your own life and how that ripples out to you know the the young men that you meet or young women mm. whatever um i feel that that's important that that you know that there is an adulting that happens where um that exemplified automatically helps the young people around you i feel you know um yeah and the nature the nature connection is massive i think that is that that plays a pivotal role would you say 
It absolutely does. And it's very difficult, I think, to be a whole person. Uh, this goes for boy, both girls and boys and women and men. It's, it's. I would say you will never be whole and, and true to yourself if you do not have that connection with nature. You, you will yeah. never know who you are if you do not have that connection with nature. Absolutely. Yeah, it's everything. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. And you are a great role model, by the way. I've I've oh, I don't you. I don't have children myself, but I have an, a young nephew in his late teens and I, I, I've sent him your videos <laughs> to, to watch because oh, I'm you. like, you know, this it, it needs to be pervasive. It needs something needs to stop that kind of narrative that is just um it, it's epidemic levels, I feel, uh, in terms of um what's being fed to the children now. Yeah, and, and it's like I fear that, and I know that these young people are wasting their so many years and may, maybe their entire lives uh, believing in these stupid role models that they have adopted, so to speak, and yeah. these ideals that, like, for instance, these... Um, I can't remember, they, they're calling it something, but, you know, these people who think that, uh, like the Andrew Tates of this world, you know, um, it, it's like, if you go out as a young boy or a teenage boy with that mindset, you will be, you will always be unsuccessful when it comes to women. You will be always perceived as a loser and you'll get nowhere. Uh, yeah. quite the opposite of what they are prom promoting and they're not promoting it for free by the way that's uh right right yeah so, so it's like they they yeah. will be wasting years and possibly their entire youth or life uh and the women the girls i think it's even worse um i i'm not uh i'm, I'm not up to date at all about their ideals but yeah. i i think it's a very superficial uh thing going on with girls now yes. how they, they should look in a certain a certain way and and all that uh and also we I have know. thing where oh you don't need a man you don't need anyone and and all that and well it's um that's a lie for most it, is, it is a lie <laughs> It is a lie and it's division. It's more it's it's this yeah. division between man and woman uh, and, and how how whatever they can do to try and cause that rift, um, which which ultimately causes every other sort of problem escalating from that. You know, how can we set against each other? How can we pitch sexes against each other? The whole, you know, and races, the whole thing. It's it's a uh, it's a tricky balance. So I think the more the more of us that are doing the work to um, to be just grounded adults, you know, with with these aspects of us reconciled as well, yeah. you know, is yeah. is really important work. Mm. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, there's so much going going on in the world. Um, I I'd love to actually just speak to. Do you know through your own research in terms of what were what was the dynamic between um, going back to Viking times, the men and the women? Because we've such a poor depiction of kind of that role of men and women in Viking times from the early conquests here. Yeah, well, I I know quite a bit about that, uh, and we are constantly gaining more knowledge um but I, I can you know there, there are some myths and misconceptions about about yeah. the whole thing so uh, you have the viking female warrior um and that's well there are actually in the sagas it's mentioned that uh, a couple of occasions it was probably very uncommon um, for good reason. Yeah. Because women are smaller and by, back then they were much smaller. <laughs> the men were smaller yeah. too. Right. The yeah. Vikings were not giants. <laughs> <laughs> and they would be slaughtered at the battlefield. Yeah. The women. They would or be captured and sold as slave, slaves to 
you know, it's it, that was the yeah. brutal reality of the whole thing. So um, that's one thing. And we need to realize that um, you, you did not have the same amount of choice concerning your life when you go back to the Viking age because of obvious reasons. Um, also for women, life was more dangerous because of childbirth uh, yes. back then. It was risky. You know, um, people seem to forget these things. So, um, yeah, you did. You you did not have the same amount of choice. Um, if you're uh, if you were a boy, you would be doing these things here. If you were a girl, you would be doing these things, right? Yes. Uh, but then again, um, we must not think that it was like. Uh, 1400s uh, continental Europe either because it was not uh, if we're talking about pre the pre-Christian era yes. we know for instance that uh, girls did sports that was a big thing uh, uh, they would do sports like the boys and then with Christianity came uh, new laws and more separation so that between boys and girls so that girls were not allowed to do sports anymore mm -hmm. um, and we know that women had certain rights they had the right to divorce they would inherit um, for instance the voting right at the, um, uh, the thing um, you know where they got together to vote about things you know so oh, yes. if she was a, a widow she would be having the vote, uh, keeping the vote of her deceased husband, and so on. And you had, well, I could go on and on and on about property rights. And yes, so it's a there's there's a lot that could be said about it. But so there's more equality. The there was equality on a level between man and woman in those times, you feel. Uh, what did you say? there? It, was there do you feel there was equality between man and woman in those times? Equality, no, well, no, 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 you know, no, 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 no. Uh, there was no equality in the Viking Age. Like uh, they, it was if you, they had slaves. For that's one thing. Okay. You know? so, uh, no equality, um, and most people they they did not really have much to say if noble the nobles said. You you need to do this. You need to do that. And and uh, this this was and this it got worse as power was central centralized under one king. Right. Uh, and for instance, in Norway, they fought ferocious ferociously. Yes. <laughs> against um, the the centralization of power, and managed to kill quite a few of those kings to try to do that. Um, so that they could keep more local power, local, uh, uh, yeah, local power. Um, right. Yeah. So, which can be, which is a bit similar to what's going on in the world right now. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Except we're not killing kings, but uh, anymore. <laughs> but, uh, we're doing it in a different way. Yeah. I'll say no more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Well, I think these cycles of time, they they replicate and repeat, right? Uh, there's there's yeah. culture, cultural themes that keep showing up, do you feel? Nothing new under the sun. No. Um, just the tools are a little bit different. Uh, we're still just apes with long legs. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I know a lot of Christian people especially get mad at me when I say that. That's why I say it a lot. And... <laughs> <laughs> And it's like uh, we're not that advanced. We we're just apes with long legs, uh, quite advanced tools, and we're four meals away from anarchy. So that's yeah. the yeah. that's us. That that sums it up there right now, <laughs> for sure. Do you, Bjorn, have any? Do you have a spiritual practice, or is that not something that you would? Is nature just your your connection to kind of balancing and connecting to, uh, more than yourself, or do you even believe in that? Well, I, I like to walk in the woods. That's my spiritual practice. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. And so then for you, like on a daily basis, are there certain practices that that keep you set tra- or endeavor to keep you centered in these wild times? Well, I am not list, so uh, that means that I kind of mentally leave this world for several hours every day. Uh, So maybe that counts. Yeah, absolutely. That gives that gives a break from from what's going on for sure. Yeah. Well, I do (laughs) I do powerlifting, which is also uh and archery Strength. getting back into archery now i like that but um the focus that you need uh mm. for uh very you know powerlifting is a very technical sport um and so is archery of course and the yes. focus that you need will it's very healthy to have that kind of focus on something different um because it it requires all of your focus so <laughs> absolutely so you're fully present and you're you're utilizing different parts of your brain as well and your body i'm sure yeah, yeah. yeah. so the, so the power of i suppose building resi- res- resilience um in the body ultimately helps build resilience mentally you feel oh yeah yeah that's a different aspect and very important i would say uh i think doing some kind of um, a sport is, uh, we should all do some kind of sport or physical exercise yeah. um, because it's healthy you know when we were built to move and be active uh, and i i think that people now they sit still a lot uh, and i think that alone can be that alone is a reason to unhappiness depression yeah uh, things like that um it, it's not good and you know i don't like the smartphone i don't have a smartphone most people do i'm not yeah. here to to point my finger at anyone but i'm just trying to get across the message that it might not be good for us to spend like three four five hours every day looking at that smartphone maybe we we would be better off without doing that yeah Um, it's just a suggestion i i had a smartphone myself three years ago uh threw it away so i'm never going back at all never Um, well done yeah that's a that's a a really powerful move they are just yeah they they just they suck the life force out of most of us (laughs) you know um i did i I did uh, yeah I have one. <clears throat> oh yes, the old phone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that that's a really bigger um that speaks to a bigger thing of being able to pull away from all of the things that are that are taking your attention, you know, through technology and and kind of taking back your time on a on a simple level and engaging re-engaging with life on those levels. Yeah, I think that kids they should get a a knife instead of a phone and they should be encouraged to get into whittling yes. uh, <laughs> yeah okay yeah 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 instead of looking at the smartphone <laughs> yeah i would agree i would agree or anything any of the crafts i feel like you know knitting or weaving anything that you're working with your hands with is a really so so i i i i'm going to give an example it's a bit funny but um yeah. i if no, I don't take the bus because I have a car. <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> I don't like public transport. No, either do I. No. <laughs> but uh, and I don't live in the city, so I, you know, it's well. Uh, but anyway, uh, if I did take the bus, uh, I, I, I would want to get my knife out and start whittling, <laughs> waiting for the bus. The, fun, the 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 crazy thing is that people would be looking at me like this. Yeah. But they are the crazy ones because they're all looking at their smartphone. I know. I'm doing the healthy thing, you know. I totally agree with you. Purpose. 
You know, I know I, it's passing a bus stop uh, the other day and just every person, there was about 10 people lined up and every person was arched like this, just like the head over, just looking at the phone. It was I, I thought, what reality have I stepped into? It, it's just it's scary. You know, but I, I get it. It's boring to wait for the bus, you know, and, and I, I get it. So, <laughs> well, but, people people watching was the thing back in the day. You know, you yeah. just watch people instead. But yeah, and and it's like um, when I I've made a few videos, one per year, so uh, one year without the smartphone, two years without the smartphone. Now, this weekend I did the three years without the smartphone uh, video, and then I do get comments that well, I'm watching this on a smartphone. It's like yes, I know that. I know. I know. I know that I know. you can also watch it on a laptop computer yes. or your TV or and so on. And and you or you can watch it on your smartphone, just saying that I don't have a smartphone and this is mine. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. And I listened to that I listened to that video and I agree on all the points. And I'm really trying to endeavor to get off mine because it's 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 really yeah, it's it's a thing, but it's re, re, renegotiating your time and how you spend it with, on technology, isn't it? Mm, yeah. So uh, for me, that's a big thing for me because I am on YouTube and yeah, of uh, course, uh, it would be too much if I if I did not uh, do that. Like I I use scheduling um, a lot. Right. Uh, it's not like I'm sitting watching with my channels all the time i i scheduled videos and i uh yeah i try to work in such a way that uh i'm not on online every day and um Great. Uh, yeah you know that's that's really important i was going to ask you about how you achieve that balance with nature and and the writing and being online so it's yeah i also the lives <laughs> i do live streams on one of the channels as you know <clears throat> I usually do those after my writing in the morning. Um, then I'm sitting there uh, in front of my computer anyway. So uh, yes. I feel it's okay to have a chat with people online. Um, that makes sense. And and you do it so well. So thank you oh, for thank your you. thank you for your voice. No, honestly, it's it's really important, you know. Um and obviously that reflects in the amount of people that are feel connected to what you're bringing through as well which is which is fantastic you know well i don't know if it's so fantastic uh it's just some guy sitting there in the half darkness and uh talking <laughs> well you know it's it's about connect it's about talking about real things and you know keeping that voice in there and some people don't have the courage to speak like you do so um thank you for doing it on behalf of those that don't well, thank you. Uh, yeah. So, so I know Bjorn that we uh, got there's so many things that I want to talk to you about. But look, we're we can talk we're, again we're, some, yeah. some other time. I would love mm. that. I would love that. And maybe maybe to conclude, I'd love to just um, round this off with what freedom means to you personally. Well, that's a big question. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'll try to res I'll, I'll try to reply. Mm -hmm. Um, I think freedom is more about what life would be without it. It's like air. So a good life, uh, in a good life, you have freedom. And if you take, and then maybe you don't notice freedom so much. And then if you take it away, it's like taking the air away. You can't breathe. Mm. I think. Yeah. But freedom is necessary. And, uh, that's why I've talked about it quite a lot uh, on YouTube because I need I need to get that message across. It's it is my most important message and our most important message. We must not allow freedom to to be taken from us. It's very it will be very difficult to get it back if that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bjorn.
Thank you so much for your presence in the world. And yeah, I hope to be reading your Viking novels at some point in English. I know I've heard that you're pushing for, for that to happen uh, yes, at some I'm point. My best. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm sure you are. Um, and I'm sure it'll happen. So we'll add to that energy. Um, mm. Thank you so much. And again, just anyone who's listening, um, you're just a fountain of wisdom and stealth, actually. And you may, I, I, honestly, honestly, and there's a lot there for people. So um, I would recommend everyone check you out and we'll put all the usual links there for for people. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.